Welcome to the Art of Listening to Your Body podcast. My name is Dr. Jinong and I'm your host. I'm a cathartic release therapist, professionally trained as an osteopath, psychosomatic therapist, Western acupuncturist and herbalist. I'm fascinated by the mind-body connection and how your physical body is a manifestation of your emotional state. I help people get unstuck from their chronic pain, whether it be physical or emotional, and live the life they truly desire, grounded in values and driven by purpose. My aim is to create awareness to the underlying emotions behind pain, injury, and disease in the body, as well as behavioural dysfunctions and mental imbalances that present. I do this using a unique blend of Eastern and Western philosophies and a good dose of intuition. Join me to learn more about the story of your body, what different issues may indicate, how to release emotions so that you can prevent problems, as well as inspiring pain story interviews. So I am back into the solo podcast. Life got a little bit busy and I had a whole bunch of interviews lined up and I just started publishing interviews. And even though they take about an hour to do, I just find it so much easier to be in conversation with people. I do, however, love to share my own personal stories. And today I am going to talk a little bit about a money story and the investments I have made, particularly over the last few years, but really when my journey started about eight years ago, doing all of this work that I love. And I did put a little question up on my social media to ask if anyone else was interested to hear about the investments I have made that have helped me get to where I am now. Now, most people wanted to listen to it and a couple didn't, and that is okay. So if you don't really like hearing people talk about money, I want to let you know that that is absolutely fine. There are people out there who get triggered, they get activated, and they do get judgmental about people talking about money. However, I do want to share this story for those of you who want to break through this discomfort. If you do feel like you're going to get a little bit judgmental or get triggered from this, then you don't have to listen to it. In my world, I always say, take what resonates with you and leave behind what doesn't. So this is something that has taken me a little while to share with those of you, those of you who I don't know. I talk about it very openly within my groups and I'm very transparent about my money journey, in particular, what I invested. The things that I paid for to get me to where I am, because I can tell you right now that these investments have not always been comfortable and quite often they have been very stretchy. So I remember I did a bit of a summary towards the end of 2020 because I'm kind of new into the online space. I'm 18 months into it now and the journey has just completely blown me away. I am doing something that I absolutely love, talking about the mind-body connection and how emotions manifest in our lives in so many different ways. And it has been quite a journey to get here And I talk about how the money is a byproduct of doing something that I love and it is the energy that flows that allows me to do more amazing things and deliver more of the work that I love to do. So hmm, that podcast, if I remember, I was talking about how I started this journey about eight years ago, not the online space journey, but building my clinic and the personal development journey. And this was a crazy, huge investment. And I haven't actually sat down and added everything up. 
but this was with my husband and myself. And I love to share this story because I know that some people might look at me and go, well, you've always been able to do this because you've had money because you were an osteopath and blah, blah, blah. But I was not someone who would say, I don't have any money yet. I've got a hundred thousand savings stashed away somewhere. (laughs) I would say, oh, I don't have the money for that. And I literally wouldn't have the money for that. Whether that's because I wasn't very good with my money, I'm not too sure. However, the journey into personal development, it started around eight years ago. And it was when Gavin and I had a six-week-old baby. Actually, take a step backwards. I was pregnant and I was at the Mind Body Spirit Festival. And I'm not actually going to necessarily mention who it is that I have invested in because everyone's going to have different experiences. And I remember Gav being drawn towards this guy that was holding this book with a face on it. And it felt very salesy. And I was trying to drag him the other way, going, Gav, we're not really into this stuff. What are you doing? And sure enough, he had a great conversation with this guy and The guy got his email address, his phone number, and he said, just read the book. And so Gav did read this book when I was in the last weeks of my pregnancy and when Violet was born. And sure enough, this guy kept to his word and he called Gavin when Violet was about five or six weeks old. And he convinced him to go to this seminar. I don't know if he charged him at the time or if he did, it was about $50. And We had just moved to Melbourne. I had always worked as self-employed. I had saved up a little bit of money. I'd say maybe $10,000 to live off and Gav was meant to get work. So we'd moved from New Zealand and we came back to Australia. That's why we were at the Mind Body Festival. And he was going to have some time off because we really were attachment parents, but he didn't get work for six months Yeah, I was living at my parents' house at the time as well. But he went to this seminar and then he came home. I decided to stay home with Violet, who was six weeks old. And he said, now, let me just explain this. (laughs) So I knew that some news was going to hit me. Before you say anything, we can get a refund. And he told me that he had just dropped $6,000 on this self-development course and told me all of the information about it. And I just remember bursting out into tears. Now, I don't think I was a hormonal postpartum mother with a six-week-old baby. I think I probably would have burst out into tears anyway because that felt like the last of our money. And I have operated in this space Um, for years at a time where I kept on feeling like I was spending the last of my money. So anyway, I went from tears and I got angry and I remember probably cursing at him saying, what the F have you done? Like, we don't actually have that money. You don't even freaking have a job. (laughs) And you've just gone and spent $6,000. And he just said, look, let's Let's just give it a go. I like the sound of what this guy has to offer. And I said, okay, do it, but you've got to make that money back. If it's that good, put your words into action. So the pressure was on. And the personal development course was very open to me going long and having Violet, who is just a young baby. Anyway, the time came and it was a four-day, had to travel Um, up to a different part of Australia to go to this four-day event where everything was provided for us. I decided to stay at home. So Violet was only three months at the time and for Gavin to go on his own. And he went away and his mindset was changed. It was blown away and it was just so amazing. And he came back home and I was not on the same level as him. And all I wanted to do was pull him down and make him feel really shitty for the decisions that he had made. Now, he's incredibly patient and he waited until I got in alignment with him. So three months later, when he was six, um, when Violet was six months old, I decided to go up and Gav came as a support um, to purely look after 
Violet, which was actually quite a breakthrough because whenever she cried, she was given to me. And because (laughs) there was a lot of money on the line, he had to look after her and he did a pretty good job. But I was absolutely hooked on the content. I was in the room from 7 a.m. in the morning until 11 p.m. at night and Gav would bring Violet into breastfeed and she would sleep on the floor next to me and when it was bedtime, he would take her. And I was just buzzing. I was not tired. I was like, this is so amazing. And in general, sometimes there is a bit of an on-sell after these courses. And, of course, it was an on-sell to keep doing this work. And... I was like, let's do this. Now, to give you a bit of a summary, this is when I learned that you could actually run a business that was aligned with your values, that it bettered people's lives and all these kind of things, and that you could build a business that served you and your family and those around you. It also taught you a little bit about property. I just was one of those people and I didn't grow up in a family that exchanged or traded properties or anything like that. I just didn't have the knowledge to the point where there's no way I would have gone to speak to any bank managers because I felt so dumb because I didn't know anything about property. One of the biggest things I've learned is that you just need to ask for help and you just need to ask for support. And I know that for me, when I was a practicing osteopath, I didn't expect people to know things and I was there to educate them. So it was about business, it was about property, and it was about personal development. And I was just so carried away. I was like, this is amazing, and I can feel the shifts, and I felt in alignment with Gav. I don't know if I actually ever said sorry, but it's like, sorry, I treated you that way for those few months and beforehand and made you feel really bad. (laughs) But the investment that they were asking for was around 50000 Australian dollars. And I had never operated in these figures before. And I was like, holy cow. But there was something in my gut that was telling me this feels right. And I feel like for the most part, I have managed to make pretty good decisions in my life. But this was just, oh my gosh, the pressure is on. How am I going to make this money back? How am I even going to pay for this? And I don't recommend everyone does things the way I do, which is also why I'm not necessarily going to mention who the people are that I've worked with. And some of them I might end up getting them on the podcast is that just because it worked for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And you need to feel in your heart and your gut that the decisions you make are good for you, for you now, and also in the future, because you're the one that's going to have to take responsibility. So if that 50,000 Australian dollars went down the drain, I would have to take responsibility for that. So I say that because I was just about to tell you that we actually dropped 50,000 across multiple credit cards. Um, Not advisable. It worked out in the end. However, yeah, we learned a lot in that process and I don't think we ended up paying any interest on it, which was great. But I do remember when we managed to pay that off, it was like, wow, we've just managed to make that much money to pay that debt off. Now, in terms of personal development, and some of you would have recognized this in yourself with the years gone by, if you have done personal development, and some of you might have just be starting your personal development journey and feeling this way. This investment did not pay off for another few years. So it got me into the mindset of planning how I wanted my business to look. And there were times when I did not like this coach, this mentor that was teaching everything. They were incredibly triggering. And I know people around me who were like, this person is the best ever. And I could see that they had created a lot of success and wealth in their life. And there were other people that felt like their lives were destroyed. And so that's why I'm mindful of sharing who it is I have worked with, because it doesn't mean that you were guaranteed to get results. So it was really interesting to be in that space and hear different sides of the story. 
I don't like to pass judgment until I've experienced it myself, but I definitely have experienced and did experience times of wanting to argue, um, wanting to blame for my situation and at times bring this coach down. I am now in a space where I won't do that because I will trust and they obviously trusted that things will drop at the right time for me. And so this 50,000 Australian dollars, this investment, it did pay off a few years later when I did actually manage to buy a property, which was a property that I managed to put my business into. And I just never thought that I would actually ever be able to buy property. But the things that I learned on how to ask questions and how to ask for support, it just, it worked out in the funniest way. And that's probably just another story for another time. But I also remember learning about business and working with your dream team and bringing on the right accountants and lawyers and all that kind of stuff to work with you. And again, I wasn't in this world where I ever had to deal with accountants and lawyers. All I thought was that you just pay them so much money and what do you get for the work they do? But sure enough, just knowing that this was possible, I did start to attract the right people to work with me when I set up my clinic and, you know, built relationships with bank managers where I didn't feel so stupid and they were willing to help me out. So I have been in that position of feeling like, okay, I don't have much money um, in my bank account um, and that I don't have this knowledge and I don't know what to do, but I have really learned just to put one foot in front of the other and ask questions, ask for support, and know that there are people out there that want to help you. And I talk a lot about how what I've created has been based in intentions. So this was my first experience of investing, and I would consider that this was a pretty high level um, for both Gav and myself, and it really paid off a few years later. And I really credit that experience to being the catalyst for setting me on this path of knowing what is possible to create in the future. So it started with cursing Gav, thinking he had just like spent the last of our money and what crazy idea was he up to and pulling him down because he had done all this personal development to thank God he wanted to go that way at the Mind Body Festival and pick up that book with a cheesy face on it. (laughs) And I actually think often of reaching out to this mentor, this coach that I had eight years ago, just to say, hey, this is where I am right now. And very grateful for the patience and their ability to just stand their ground and trust in the timing and know that things would drop in for everyone and for myself at the right time. So this is when I first learned about having coaches and ongoing coaching. And Again, why I share this is because I felt the stretch of investing even just a few hundred dollars on a coach, I thought was so much. And all of my coaches have been amazing, if you are listening to this, and we have navigated different things and sometimes I have grown out of coaches or I have also used coaches which I just recognized we weren't in alignment And it was having the ability to break up with them, to just say, hey, this isn't feeling right. I'm going to go find someone else. And if you're working with a good coach, they will just know when the journey's up and they will redirect you as well. Uh, I say this because I know so many people get attached to their coach emotionally and they feel like they're going to hurt their feelings if they stop working with them. But anyone who coaches you, I believe it's great if they just want to see you to continue to grow and they know when they need to stop working with you as well. So yeah, I remember when I wanted to set up my clinic, I engaged another coach that was a few hundred dollars a session. And I would just catch up with them a couple of times a month. And there wasn't any long-term commitment. So I could get out. And I just remember thinking that $300 was so much money especially when I didn't actually have the clinic running. But this gave me the stepping stones and the ideas and 
the intel, the inside information that a lot of people don't talk about in what I could do to set my business up to prevent the mistakes. And this is why I now work with a lot of coaches and mentors is there are just a couple of steps ahead of me and they inspire me and I wish to do the things that they have done. And I want to find out what is the best way about going to do this to avoid potentially the costly mistakes. So I only used that coach for a few months. And then I think I had a little bit of a break. So I had a break for a couple of years and things were, no, sorry, it was about 18 months. I had a break. I had started my clinic, which grew incredibly quickly. And then I bought a second clinic location and I took this opportunity and I use all sorts of spiritual guidance as well. And I was using an astrologer at the time who said, yeah, this will be a great opportunity. Again, my spiritual guides are probably a separate podcast, but just so that you know, I do use all sorts of quirky stuff when I'm making decisions. And all of a sudden I was like, wow, I've got two clinics and a team to manage. And actually I don't know how to do this. And I very quickly searched for mentors and a lot of the coaches and mentors I actually just find in the online space. Again, it wasn't a Google search or anything like that. Um, It's just advice from friends, referrals from friends and so on. And it turned out I actually contacted these people. It was actually a group of coaches for clinic owners. I contacted them a year ago to the date and I had just forgotten that. But I was now in the position to actually look for a coach. And I said, okay, this is what's happened. I need to bring this business up. I need to turn it around and I need some help. Uh, These guys also did not have a commitment, which I really liked. And this was about two and a half thousand Australian dollars a month. And I actually stayed with them for two and a half years. And I'm just about to um, end my relationship with them. So it was two and a half thousand Australian dollars a month. And I said to them, you tell me everything to do and I promise I will do it. And the things that I choose not to do, I will take responsibility for not doing them. And I did the majority of the stuff they told me to do, even though it was uncomfortable. And sure enough, within a couple of months, I saw my clinic turn around and I really saw the value of having a coach and someone who could see things from the outside because they weren't emotionally attached to it. And as I say, I stayed with them for, yeah, almost two and a half years and they have helped me with my clinic business and the ups, the downs, the challenges, and of course, the growth of growing my second baby, my clinic baby. So that was another big investment. And then when I went into the online space in March 2020, so only about 18 months ago now, this is where I laid down a lot of cash. So you might have heard a previous um, podcast of me talking about my journey and why I got into the online space, but there are, of course, little pockets that I haven't shared yet. But just a quick summary, when the big C hit, Around the world, New Zealand in March 2020 went into a very strict lockdown. They called it level four. And this meant that my clinic shut down. And I didn't know at that point in time how long it would be. And I had no income coming in. I wasn't able to work. My team were not able to work. My husband, who was a mountain guide at the time, had to cancel his trip to, I think he was going to Bolivia, where he was going to guide a client. So he couldn't work and he had no income. Basically, there was no streams of income coming in, yet we had a six-year-old at the time. So we had a child to look after. We had a rent to pay. We had um, commercial rent to pay. There was just basically expenses, just draining out very fast. And I was like, my gosh, I need to make a change. 
Now, coming into the online space was a dream of mine a few years ago. I just didn't know it was going to happen then. And this is where I say the big C was like the illness that wasn't affecting me, but I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to affect me. So it was my time to pivot. And I know not everyone pivoted at that time and some people have done it later and a little bit later again, and that's okay. That's all about your divine timing and surrendering to the timing and being patient. But I am very glad that I pivoted at that point in time. However, yeah, there was all the money going out and nothing coming in. So I was then contacted by my lovely coach who I still work with. And she asked me if I wanted to do her course, which was about selling in the online space. And it was a thousand dollars at the time. And I was like, oh, this is my situation. I don't have any money coming in and it's all going out. And my clinic's in this position. I really need to focus on it. I don't know, a thousand, a thousand US dollars. That's like 1500 New Zealand dollars. So got in my head, got all the excuses. But I have to let you know how I met this amazing coach. And I hope that I could get her on the podcast one day. We were at a wedding six months prior in September 2019. And it was in Mykonos in Greece. And it was for the most beautiful couple. It is one of the most heartfelt weddings I've ever been to. And Mykonos is a very expensive place. (laughs) Now, I remember getting an email um it was actually my husband's friend but I do know them as well getting an email that hey if you want to stay at the hotel that we're getting married at uh you can get a 10 percent discount something like 600 or 800 euros to stay there per night (laughs) and we're like no thanks we're gonna stay down the road at somewhere for 150 dollars a night (laughs) 150 New Zealand dollars a night I can't actually remember how much it was But this is like the judgment piece with money that will come up. Now, I don't go, oh, my God, what are they doing offering us to stay at a 600, 800 euro a night hotel? I sit there and go, oh, my gosh, how the hell can people afford to stay in a hotel that costs this much? And I went to this wedding and all of the guests and, of course, the people's wedding it was, they are the most beautiful people and everyone there was just so humble. A lot of them were lived nomadic lifestyles and were in the coaching industry as well. And, yeah, they were just great. And I happened to sit across the table from my lovely coach and was genuinely interested in what one another did. And I'm sitting there going, wow, but how, how do you do this? And what do you do? Getting caught up in the how. And she said to me, I think we're going to work together one day. I was like, oh, that's nice. (laughs) And anyway, fast forward. So we come to March, April time. And this is when she called me and said, hey, you know, I've got this course and I think you'd be a great fit. And I had to come to terms with spending a thousand US dollars. And I actually wanted to jump straight into what's called her mastermind, which is a 12 month coaching commitment because I would get this thousand dollar course for free. She wouldn't even tell me how much it was at that time. And she said, you just got to get on this course first. And I like to make my money back. (laughs) And so I knew that all I had to do was rely on myself and that I had already had and created evidence that I would do what I was told and I would take responsibility for doing the stuff that I didn't do, not doing the stuff that I was told to do. So I just had a really great time on this course and I felt what it felt like to be supported because when I put my first online course out there and started my online coaching biz where people would work with me for a minimum of 12 weeks, it was unknown for me. And I felt the wobbles and I felt the self-doubt and I had learned how you should be able to run a webinar and everybody buys on the webinar. And (laughs) I had one person buy on the webinar and thought I had to like burn my whole, whole course down and that I wasn't destined to do this. But someone who was unemotionally attached to my 
business gave me insight and supported me and said, you could do this, you could do that. And I got a little bit uncomfortable and I went and did those things, which are now second nature to me and I really enjoy. Again, I won't necessarily share the techniques because it's not for everyone. However, that is where my business started to grow and I got to see the potential and I was having fun once I got over the fears and I was working with people. I was teaching practitioners the work that I did. I was working in the online space with clients from all around the world and seeing the impact that I could have without touching people because I say that because I was a physical therapist and that was the benefit of you know being thrown out of the bricks and mortar clinic with the lockdown is that I never thought I could treat people without putting my hands on them or sticking needles into them. But I was forced into the online space and this is the only way of consulting with some of my clients. And I saw how much the deeper emotional connection made and all the various things. So anyway, after that investment, I hope you're keeping track. Maybe you can add it up for me. I went on to sign up to her mastermind. and. This was just quite different. It was the online space. I was just blown away by what, by what I was seeing. And for the practitioners, coaches, therapists out there, this is where I say, you know, it is another world out there and sometimes you just don't know what else is available to you. And I find the online space really inspiring, what people are doing and the information they're sharing. So she asked me to sign up to her mastermind and I said, okay, well, how much is it? It sounds great. And I got these results with you. And I had only just made a little bit of money and lots was still going out. And oh, what was it? I think the sum was 20,000 US dollars. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, I can't afford that. I got all in my head. I went to my friends and I said, oh, I really feel drawn to join this mastermind. It's 20,000 US dollars. And they're like getting their calculators out. That's 30,000 New Zealand dollars. I'm like, I know it's a lot. Um, And will I be able to make that back? Is it really going to be that good? But again, I was just so drawn to it. And also, you know, the friends that I asked, Um, this, I say this part because I want you to be wary of when you talk to certain people. Now, these are friends that I'm still friends with and they're so encouraging with what I'm doing, but had also not necessarily invested at this level. So it was a bit like, "Mm, not too sure. And, you know, should you really do it? It's a lot of money. But again, thankfully, I listened to my sort of internal dialogue and I feel into, does it feel right? Because logically this does not make sense to go and spend this much money, 20,000 US dollars. Um, yeah, just didn't make sense. And so I did have to ask to go on a payment plan where it would be smoothed out because I did not have that much money to drop on coaching. And this has been one of the many best investments I have made. It was just amazing to be around a group of, it was mainly mainly women coaches. Yeah, it was all women coaches. There was a male um, that was like facilitating some aspects of the group. But it was just amazing to be around other women who were working towards doing the same thing, getting themselves out there into the online space and doing the work that their soul was really calling them to and having this space where you were focused on growth but you were also allowed to show up and be vulnerable and some of these women were quite a few steps ahead of me and so I was like wow you're doing that how did you do that and it's often not really like about how um, but they share their journey and they showed me that it was possible They showed me that what I wanted to do was possible. They had proven it. And if they could do it, I could do it too. So I really feed off that energy off a group. It's a completely different dynamic to -to one-to-one coaching, which I also value. But you just get so many different personalities and so many different shared ideas inside of a mastermind. And this is something that I've seen in my groups and masterminds that I facilitate nowadays. So that... 20,000 US dollars, I agreed to a payment plan. So it actually turned out to be 25,000 US dollars for the convenience of being on a 
payment plan. But about nine months in, my business was doing so much better than I ever thought. And I was able to do a lump sum payment and pay that off. And that coach is someone that I have renewed with. And even though they put their prices up and I had the wobbles again, I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to re-sign or not. Just something inside of me said, go and do it. And again, it has just been amazing. And I have seen myself grow in this space. So that's my online coach. And that's my original online coach that I've re-signed with. However, I have dabbled in some other coaches. So I've learned a lot about myself on this journey. And it was about nine months into the journey, everything was actually ticking along really well. And sometimes when things feel easy, this may be you, but this was me. I felt like, oh, there's something missing and I can add to this. And so I signed up to another coaching program and this time I paid $20,000 US in full, which was a really nice feeling to go, oh, I actually have the money to pay in full this time and I don't have to pay a few thousand dollars extra because I need to go on a payment plan. Um, But I had seen the growth and the return from investing in myself, not just financially, but more so emotionally and energetically to be able to align to these new desires and creating what I was creating. Because I often talk about when you step into the thing you want to do, there's all sorts of resistance that can come up. Um, It happens to a lot of people. And that's why I think coaches are so valuable to help you see beyond that and keep growing into that energy. So I signed up to another coaching program, which was very strategy focused and I loved it for the first few months, but I have to say, but probably after the first three months, I stopped using it. I stopped turning up to calls. I stopped taking part in it, but the difference, not the difference with this, but what I want to say is that it wasn't a waste because I only used three months. I went in, I found out I thought I wanted to do this thing, this method, this strategy. And I found out by doing it that I didn't want to do it, that it didn't feel aligned and I wasn't going to force it just to complete the container. However, that's the lesson that I got out of this container. And I have had other benefits of building amazing relationships with people. Some of these people have been on my podcast and they have supported me with different questions that I've had along my journey. But I did drop a lot of cash on this program It wasn't for me. It's not to say that it was a terrible program or anything like that because I have seen people just take the concepts, use the strategy and have had huge growth. So I still see stuff pop up and I'm still part of this group, Um, but it's just not for me right now. And again, instead of getting into blaming attitude or saying all the things that were wrong about it, is taking responsibility and just going, well, what did I get out of it? And what did I learn? Because I thought I desired to do this thing that they can teach you to do. However, once I started doing it, I felt how out of alignment it was and came back to what is it that I love to do? And then, hmm. Another investment. So I did, I have spent a lot of money in the last year, but I have also learned what I like to invest in. Then I came around to June, June 2021, and I had already had a pretty full on start to the year. So the first half of the year, it was all a bit of a whirlwind, creating new things, really launching to the online space. So I stepped back from the clinic and was just working in the online space. And then I kind of got a little bit flat and I shared this within my groups. I was like, I've got energy for you guys, but I don't think I want to do any more programs for the rest of the year. I don't want to see any one-to-one clients. And so before I get burnt out, I knew to take myself on a little holiday and have a break, child-free time to just actually process my thoughts. And so a girlfriend and I, we went over to Noosa We got in and out just at the right time, Noosa in Queensland, to have some beach time and sunshine and kid-free time. 
And I went over there with the intention that I was just going to look after myself. I was going to go seek out all sorts of therapy and treatment and just receive for all of my hard work (laughs) over the past six months. And I was like, oh my gosh, I really feel like I want to get out of this funk because um, I don't know, can I just work like this for six months of the year? But I knew something was a little bit off, but I definitely had energy for the courses and the clients that I was seeing at that time. So don't worry, I didn't fully check out or anything. But I went into receive mode and actually through that experience, I was able to share with the groups what I was going through and therefore what they could do for themselves and how they could shift their mindset. And one of my fellow coaches in a mastermind um, I just had seen her groan and I was like, what happened to you? (laughs) How did you do this? And she was like, I don't know, this coaching, blah, blah, blah. And then she said, oh, actually, I know there was another pivotal point at this point in time because I was like, there was a certain point in time I saw something visibly shift in her. And she said, I oh, I'm part of this program and you just get to watch all of these live programs from this coach and I don't know, it's just great and there's all these women in it and they're just killing it. (laughs) And so it was really interesting. I was up at like 5 a.m. talking to her in the dark as I was walking down to a Pilates class and I'm one for signs and this particular coach, um, talks a lot about pineapples. And I was on the phone. I was like, oh gosh, I don't know. I just spent this money of this program that I've only used for three months. I love the program that we're being coached in. And oh, it's another 15,000 US dollars. Um, And I turned to the left and I was outside a shop and there was a pineapple table. (laughs) So I was like, maybe that's my sign. Anyway, I hope you're still following on along for any of you who are just interested in personal development and what it can do for you. This is really just my own journey. And it felt like such a stretch because here I was thinking, I don't want to sell any programs. I don't want to do any courses for the rest of the year. Now, I was away for about 12 days and that is all I needed to reset myself. And I did pretty much every single day lap up a treatment. I went out and ate and I did it without feeling any guilt. And I really feel like I've had many pivotal turning points in my life, but this was definitely one of them in June. So I actually wrote myself a little note and I think I might have put it in a journal, not that I'm much of a journaler, but I like to document important times in my life but I felt like that this was the turning point. <clears throat> so the, just so that you can make sense of this, but the program that I invested in, that was 20,000 US dollars and I only used for about three or four months was very strategy focused. And not to say the strategy doesn't work, but I was getting caught up in what other external things do I need? <clears throat> Excuse me to help my brand and help me get out there to the world. And after I had spent another significant bunch of money on external things, looking at advertising and media and all that kind of stuff, again, they were great. And I know these people do an amazing job, but it just was feeling out of alignment. And it felt like I was just externalizing everything. And this is where I realized, actually, you know what? For the previous year and a bit, my business has been successful. My online business has been successful just doing what I'm doing. And so I did spend some cash on a website and I do really love it, but I realized my scrappy old website was actually functioning completely fine. So it was fun doing all of this stuff, but again, tuning into myself of actually, do I really need this? And does is it exciting and does it feel my soul going through this process? And this is where I just had to cut ties with the money I've spent, nothing against the people that I've worked with. Um, and I still work with some of these external people in other ways, but it just wasn't right for me. So I cut the ties before I go and leak more money on things that I don't want to. Okay. So 
that was a very, very strategy-based program. Like go and do this, go and invest in this, go and create this, and then you will receive this. And a lot of my work, I do talk about energetics, especially if you are in my space, and I'll probably start sharing more about energetics on this podcast as well. Um, Come back to the pineapple lady. So this was a 15,000 US dollar course, and I didn't actually get any contact with this coach. It was just watching the live programs that she was delivering. But I have never watched someone so much in my life. I think I signed up to one of her free live things. And within five days, I was celebrating with my friend. I was like, I'm on board. I did it. I've invested for a year. And at this point in time, after all of these investments, I realized what a return I could create and how much I trusted myself to do this. And what I learned from this person was that it is just all about your energy, that people are attracted to you, they're magnetized to you based on your energy. And I was looking at different ways to do things, different ways from the way that I love to do things. And that felt out of alignment. And here this person was who was absolutely killing it in the online space and not following any strategy and doing things unconventionally and was successful and was very quite quite straightforward that um, everything they do is based on energy. And really just spoke my language, but in a different way. So again, I felt into that. I invested and it's been really great. And within a week or so, combined with my time away and getting treatments and listening to this content, I was inspired again. And I was inspired to just go back and do the things that I loved, to do them for free, to give information and share and connect with people. So some of you may have been on those calls with me when I was on holidays in Noosa and I just got my vibe back. And sure enough, I went on and what are we, November now? So five months later and my business has been incredible. It has reached a massive financial milestone. I'm not personally ready to talk yet about my income. I talk about it in my groups. Um, I do still fear judgment and criticism around that, but I'll happily tell you how much I've spent. Um, Yeah, my business went on. As you know, I said, I didn't want to sell anything. I didn't want to see any clients. Not that I was like, I hate my clients or anything, because obviously I don't. But I was just like, I just knew that I was not in the right space at that point in time to do anything. And it was just that short break of fully surrendering to it, trusting that I was going to get out of this funk. And yeah, I went on to have the next five months, which were just bonkers. Stuff happened that I didn't expect to happen. This is where a lot of people in the coaching world talk about the compounding effect. Things just snowballed and yeah, I reached milestones and goals that I wasn't expecting. It wasn't until after I reached the goal that I was like, wow, it just kind of happened. And this is where I know some of you who may be looking to go and do your thing, you look at people who are a few steps ahead of you and you go, how, how did you do it? And you want to focus so much on strategy. But this turning point for me really was more on an energetic level. Um, I guess my strategy, I already sort of knew that. And I got permission. I saw that someone was, someone else was doing something based on intuition and energy and people were loving it. Again, this coach, this program, this level of investment is not for everybody, but it was for me and it worked. And I just had to go and find out. And so there are many hundreds of women in this group and it is just so inspiring to be again around people who are okay celebrating things and learning to hold some people's pain and struggles um, and also to stand and be okay in their power and in their success. Because the thing is, is that when you are successful, when you're walking a path and you feel like you're on purpose, there are still going to be challenges that are happening around you. It doesn't mean that everything is going to be amazing and peachy cream in your life, there are still going to be bad things that happen. And it is all about how do you navigate this? How do you process your emotions? And how can you be okay with all of this stuff happening around you 
whilst you've got success and you're living the life that you desire. It is trusting that these people, you can inspire them and that they will walk the path when their divining timing is right and when they are ready. So I'm almost coming up to the end of my investments. And this is the craziest investment I have made. And some of you may have seen it on social media. This is the post that I asked, do you want to hear about my investments? And some people said no, and that's okay. And other people said yes. And if you're still listening and you just listened past me saying, if you feel like you get triggered by money and you're judging or you're criticizing me, it's okay. I didn't ask you to keep listening. You can tune off now. But there's probably something deep inside of you that is just really curious. And for all of the coaches that I have worked with, they have been transparent about their money. They've been transparent about their income because I want to know if they are actually walking the path that they are trying to teach me. But what I love about all of my coaches is that they also see the money as a byproduct and as energy, and they have been able to give back to many amazing causes through being able to do that and then to go on to inspire other people to walk this path as well. So my craziest investment was just recently. It was about four weeks ago off the back of hitting this huge milestone. Like I was just brimming with energy. And by the way, when you're in that energy, it's a great place to set intentions. So I made sure I made the most of that opportunity but I made an investment of another 15,000 US dollars. And the crazy thing about this is there was no information about this offer. I didn't even know how many calls, if I was going to get any calls, how many people were going to be involved, what I was going to get out of this. And it might seem ridiculous. And some of you are sitting there going, why the hell would you do this? Now, This is someone that I have worked in a space with before and I just love everything that they're doing. And it was based on you buy because you trust. Um, The funny thing is, from what I understand, that this person also didn't know what the offer was going to be, but was channeled and just called to put this offer out there and trust that it will come together, which is pretty brave for this amount of money because I know that these are not small sums. Um, they do still feel a little bit stretchy and nerve wracking when I make these payments, but I have got proof that they have paid off. So I dropped 15,000 US dollars on an offer that I didn't even know if it was going to be one day, 10 weeks, a year, if it was going to be one call, no calls, what the hell it was going to be. And I had to wait four weeks patiently and I didn't jump in the inbox and say, Hey, you know, do you have any more details about it? I just trusted. And it was a really interesting experience investing like this, knowing that this person also didn't know what was on the cards, but I feel like I've absolutely scored with this. And so this is where I feel like, yeah, the 15,000 US dollars that I spent not knowing any information. Oh, by the way, I did, I did say to my husband to Gavin, I was like, so there's this thing. And I actually just missed out on the last offer what do you reckon? And I went into like, I wanted validation from someone and I got the reminder of why I don't get validation from other people and that I should just trust my own heart and my own gut. Um, Yeah. So I went into the, like, oh my gosh, is this going to be worth it? Do I have it? Am I going to be able to pay this off? How, how, how? And um, yeah, so (laughs) that's my summary. But that program, it starts next year. I found out it's going to be a year long. It's going to be with 51 other women. I am 52 and still don't really know much about it, but I know it's going to be good. And everyone bought because of the energy of it. And I know you might think this is crazy, but you won't know until you've actually experienced it. So I have this feeling that big things are on the cards next year. I have no idea what that is. I'm excited. I surrender to the process. I trust in the timing and I can't wait. 2022, I'm into my angel numbers, 222, auspicious numbers. I just feel like it's going to be a big year and I wanted to share that with you today. 
And I am staying in the present moment, (laughs) working through each day as it comes. But I know great things have been created when I've got space and I have support in my life. I have loved every single coach that I have worked with, every single mentor I've worked with. It sounds like I've got a gajillion, but they each serve their different purposes and they have helped me grow financially, emotionally, energetically, and it's been incredible. And so I know that some of you would probably sit there and go, how? And I want to tell you that's how I started. It's not necessarily going to be for you and you need to go and find your own coaches that resonate with you who are walking the path that you wish to walk. But yeah, some of you are going to wonder how and these were all stretchy. I didn't like commitment. I now commit to 12 months with the majority of the investments that I make. I'm very grateful for the coaches out there who delivered programs where there wasn't an expected commitment and you could pull out whenever you wanted. However, I can see the benefit of when you commit to yourself for a longer period of time because I have walked that path now of committing to myself for 12 months and beyond and I have achieved and created things that I thought were possible and I have created things that I never knew were possible in my life. So don't stress, stretch yourself so much that you get stressed. This is something that I say to my clients is, you know, don't do it. Don't do it if it is really stressful. It's not great when you're in a position where you feel like you need to make money. And yeah, doing some of my earlier investments, the 50000 Australian dollars and then the 25000 US dollars that was split into payment plan, I did feel like I needed to make the money. But what I knew was that I was doing something that I've always wanted to do. And I just had to step out there and get uncomfortable. I haven't really copped any criticism and judgment. I do fear that talking about this and these sums of money that um, I will, but I'm willing to walk with that. I'm willing to let you be okay with your judgments and criticisms about it if they're there, but I do hope it inspires some of you who are maybe just a little bit unsure and maybe talking to some people who are not or haven't done this before is that if you really trust yourself, I feel like I am I am a reliable investment. I'll add to that that I did have a bit of money sitting there and I thought of maybe investing in property, which is still on the cards, but it just doesn't seem to be happening for me. I don't really understand property and this is where I've got some lovely friends who are supporting me. And then I thought, what about this Bitcoin thing? I don't have time to research it though. And then I thought about investing money in investment funds. And I had all the money there ready to do its thing, but I just wasn't pushing the button. And I'm glad I didn't because then I then had the money to drop 15,000 US dollars on something that I had no idea about, which I know sounds completely ridiculous and stupid to some of you. But I don't understand any of those markets and they feel riskier to me than investing in myself. So I hope I still stay healthy. <laughs> I hope I stay focused and I am excited to share with you whatever is on the cards for 2022. If you've been following my work for a while, I hope that one day our paths cross on a course or in coaching or in a mastermind. Um, if you are curious about anything I do, I will drop another podcast about how, what offers I have out there. So you're just a little bit clearer because I know it can be a little bit confusing because I work with practitioners and I also work with a stream of non-practitioners. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening. I've talked for way longer than I thought. It used to be a challenge for me to talk for two minutes. I don't edit my podcast. So this is me from start to finish. I hope it's inspired you. I would really love if you could leave a rating or a review or write me a message. I'm usually more active on Instagram and let me know how this podcast has impacted you and how you feel about it. If you are judgmental or critical about it and you don't think I should have shared it, I would prefer if you kept it to yourself because my feelings do still get hurt. (laughs) And I would like to just work with the people who are inspired by this story. 
So thank you very much for listening and I look forward to hearing from you and I look forward to sharing more on my solo podcast. And I do have a lineup and a wait list of a bunch of people I still need to interview, but yeah, it's just caught up on me. I have burnt through all of those interviews. I hope you've enjoyed listening to them. These are friends in the coaching space, other people I've connected with on social media, but yeah, let's get this rolling and I've got new information to share as I evolve. Bye. Thanks for learning with me on the Art of Listening to Your Body podcast. If you like what you've heard, I would love if you could rate, review and share with your friends. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. My handle is The Art of Listening to Your Body. If you're interested in working with me, I offer online courses for the general public and trainings for practitioners, therapists and coaches. I also open limited one-to-one coaching spaces throughout the year. If you would like to find out more, head to my website, drjinong.com.